focus on leverages rather than the differences both parties need to recognize that they are on the same side my belief is that every individual on this planet has a leadership trait are you recognizing it are you living up to it are you nurturing it the way it should be this is the 53rd episode of dream hunted show with mr satyan parik founder of team talent and empowerment consultants Welcome to Dream 100 Show listener. I am your host Savita Hosamani. Each week we interview today's most successful and inspiring business owners with winning teams who had the courage to chase their dreams in spite of all their challenges. Join us as we bring you everything that goes on in the minds of successful business owners during decision making process. and gain insights to make smarter decisions in today's episode we talk to mr satyan parik who had 29 successful years as a result oriented leader in the indian it industry he quit the corporate world to create a niche in the world of business coaching through his venture team talent and empowerment consultants For the past 11 years he has mentored coached and consulted various startups growing businesses and established businesses along with students and working professionals to reach their utmost potential and help them to succeed in their respective aspirations I have been very fortunate to undergo his coaching in the Goldman Sachs 10k women entrepreneurs program in the year 2013 this discussion holds a special place in my heart as it has been a transformational journey that transpired between a student and a teacher every sentence which satyan sir has spoken has so much of in depth learning for every entrepreneur or even a team player So let's hear the winning team secrets from him right here right now on Dream 100 show. Let's get started. Welcome to Dream 100 show Mr. Satyan Parik. It's truly an honor and pleasure to have you here on our show. Thank you. You had a successful corporate job of 30 years and you quit it. and then you started off with a venture called as team talent and empowerment consultants so before you actually took that step when was the idea seeded in your mind was it during your working phase or after you quit a good start point i would say it really takes me back to the entire thinking and non thinking that really engulfed me uh, as uh, i was embarking on taking this decision so uh first and foremost i i would be very very honest uh, in the fact that uh, when i decided to uh, quit my professional career i had no real clue about what am i going to do i realized only one thing is that uh, my 30 years of professional career is there an experience is there a knowledge base is there something that i can give back Uh, two people around me so that was the only haunting thought in uh, at the back of my mind mm-hmm. so uh, what i did was that uh, in the initial phases when i i took the step and why did i take the step because somewhere it just kind of the joy the passion uh, the happiness that one surrounds in the work that you do i personally believe that and throughout that career since 1982 to where till 2010 when i decided to move out of professional life uh, i was always consumed with one one thought that anything that i do has to give that joy passion uh, happiness as well as a value add that i am able to provide so when i saw that slackening when i saw that things are not really going the way it was it kind of was telling on me in my kind of outlook and and somewhere that inner frustration builds up and what not 
So it was a very, very uneasy feeling that started engulfing me. So I just decided to quit. And this was contrary to all the experts around me who were who were telling me to do otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the more I was being told, the more I was kind of consummated with the fact <laughs> that I have to, to get away from this. If you were to ask me a question, you know, that one year, two year down the line at the hindsight, did you think that uh, that was the right decision? I would have told you probably not because uh, obviously I was kind of trying to look at uh, what I need to do. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I did was uh, I enrolled myself with the, the International Coaching Federation's uh, course to be accredited as a coach. The rationale was very simple. I wanted to really ensure that whatever is my thinking, whatever is my understanding, whatever I want to do, is that really what is being sought out in the contemporary world? Because I do not know. So mm. I wanted to validate that. I wanted to uh, confirm uh, to that convictions and beliefs. Fortunately, that uh, course, the, the people that I met up with and uh, whatever I was able to achieve during that time of uh, two to three months gave me that level of confidence that uh, my thinking is right. Now I need to really formulate uh, what really I want to uh, be doing. And that is where uh, the thought of uh, saying that, hey, what is it that makes the business tick? What is it that you know drives any businesses and, and whatnot? So when, when I really started off, I, I kind of was uh, assimilating from my own experiences, my knowledge base. There was a bit of apprehension. But at the same time, there was a certain amount of confidence that uh, I will be able to figure it out. But two things that I was very conscious and which I did. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to make sure that I get to a position of zero debt. Even when I had my uh, EMIs to pay as I quit the professional uh, world, I decided to pay off those EMIs and the loan, the home loan that I had to ensure that there is nothing that uh, bogs me down, number one. Number two, I wanted to make sure that uh, the family does not get impacted under any situation and, and there is no compromise on the cost of living uh, that we had as a part of professional world to now that I'm transitioning into a bit of an uncertain uh, situation where there may not be a, a monthly paycheck that will come in, uh, which will pay the regular bills and whatnot. So uh, those were conscious things uh, that were running in my mind. And uh, I just then started off with uh, reaching out to my network, reaching out to my contacts, uh, talking to them, letting them know about uh, my thought process and and how can I be, you know, someone who can uh, probably value add to uh, their aspirations and their ambitions uh, about their businesses or about their own self. In a nutshell, that is where the whole even certain amount of predicament and whatnot was there. Uh, one thing that I also uh, was very clear and, and me and my wife uh, would discuss that uh, very regularly is to ensure that at no point of time I should have any regrets of the decisions that are taken. They may be right or wrong and we can only know about it in the hindsight. So, you know, rather than trying to really decipher, oh, you know, I should have done this. And again, being very candid and honest, uh, Savit, I would say that uh, uh, in the initial probably three, four years, uh, even as I was uh, doing the work and I was kind of getting my feet on ground with the the venture and and running the practice and whatnot, there was always that pang, uh, a a, a kind of a thought process at the back of the mind. What is this better or uh, do I really go back to professional world? (laughs) Right. So, but then uh, one thing, thing that I, I stuck on to is that uh, if I have taken that decision, I have to live with it. I cannot create any safety nets for myself. In fact, that was testing time because my elder son had just got in uh, for his master's at US in RIT. My younger son was just in uh, standard ninth. My mother was uh, a cancer survivor. I had just lost my dad in 2010, January. So there were a lot of emotional plus the other responsibility baggage. And that is when I took this decision. So uh, 
you can imagine the flurry of thoughts or the emotions and the feelings and everything that can really engulf a person but yeah that was the time where this decision was taken and i would just say that uh, almighty has been very kind and uh, the friends the network that i was able to uh, build uh, as a part of my 30 year old professional career really came in handy i have not printed a business card i have not created a website of my endeavor i have desisted from creating any teams it is just i me myself and my rationale is very simple that wherever i engage that is my team and i will do whatever i need to do to make them happy and successful that was the conviction that i used to kind of not only sit in a, a particular a ceos or a chairman's office and and talk to them on the vision in the ivory towers and and kind of let other people uh, do the execution i would kind of get that commitment validation confirmation that this is really what we want to do as a part of uh, moving from point a to point b and then go down the organization work with whoever are the relevant people uh, sit down with them get them into a coaching mode and see wherever i can help them so that has been my kind of work style or the way i practice wow you actually offloaded uh, their pain from their shoulders <laughs> once you engage their problems are your problems and and that is the beauty of, of what i believe uh, the work that i do is is a kind of a classic case of being attached mm-hmm. even while you are being attached mm-hmm. so you are able to really uh, show the mirror and help people stay honest to themselves and and try and identify uh, what needs uh, improvisation or what needs betterment or what can be augmented uh, because it's a good practice to go awesome see when you said that you start working with teams what is the usual kind of resistance that you find because many a time the business owner might be okay with the idea saying that yes we need to reach this goal but when you actually go down to people they will have lot of resistance because they feel that we are doing our best and we don't need a third party to come and tell us what needs to be done so some kind of light on what kind of resistances people usually give here again i will reflect back to the days of when i used to work in a company called hendertron and and they had hired one external consultant he used to come and he used to give us a few things about the way sales need to be done or the way we need to understand the process and all that stuff and and we as pure play sales people in that organization used to kind of keep thinking about why is this guy coming and <laughs> giving us the, all the gyan and all that stuff you know and i had that uh, very vividly etched in my memory so when i was now on the other side mm. uh, i wanted to be very conscious of the fact that i don't uh, really indulge into any gyan baji mhm i wanted to bring in as much of relevance and as much of uh, compelling areas that can really help their cause so yes um uh, i have faced uh, uh, quite a few of pushbacks i have faced quite a few of cynicism and people looking at with colored glasses into saying that why are you even here sitting and talking and why why should i be giving you the answers and what not and all that stuff some of them you can win over because they are open minded uh, some of them you may not be able to win over because they have very fixated ideas and opinions about where to take help and where not to take help i mean there are umpteen number of situations that i have come across where the initial discussion which you start off with you will always find people telling you that i have done that i have tried everything i have been there i have done that before whatever you are telling me it's all tried and tested and nothing works so we go through those uh, rigors and understand very clearly that there is a certain amount of mind block certain amount of pushback that will come in we have to basically circum uh, when that and make the other person realize and recognize that at the end of it it is not for me i am not doing this for me i have no vested interest my only vested interest is into seeing you successful and happy so if you feel you want to be there then help me help you 
then I think the resistance uh, will be reduced to a very large extent. Yeah, so as I said again, it's not that you will always have a 100% success ratio. My personal uh, success ratio has been around uh, 75 80%. There are still 20% of uh, people whom I have not been able to win over for whatever reason. Probably I may not have been able to really uh, speak the language that they want to hear. Mm. I may not have been able to understand what exactly they wanted as a part of their aspiration to be successful and happy. There could be multiple reasons to it. It's a beautiful and and challenging journey, I would say, that one has to really take uh, rather than be exasperated and frustrated with the fact that, oh, you know, people don't seem to be really understanding that I'm here to help them. And Mm -hmm. see, I I mean, let's understand, right? If we are on the other side, First and foremost, I would say that, but I have not asked for your help. So why are you coming and telling me that you want to help me? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that kind of bridge needs to be crossed over first before we really start uh, getting into the whole conversations and saying that, hey, you know, you you are doing these five things, but let me tell you, these five things need to be done this way. Mm -hmm. Sorry, very, very wrong approach. Great. Uh, usually in Indian businesses, we have uh, the children joining into the business. Uh, so when the son or the daughter joins a business, there are two different mindsets working. So the mm. approach which the father will take and the approach which the uh, uh, child will take, I mean, the son or the daughter will mm. be different. Uh, how will a person like you at that point of time blend into both the kinds of mindsets? Because there will be totally different uh, viewpoints. Right. And I have come across these uh, situations of a few manufacturing industries uh, which have had entrepreneur or the founder mm. uh, having to pass the baton to uh, his child, his son or daughter. So yes, my viewpoint and and my submission to all these you know people facing the, this level of predicament is that first and foremost, focus on leverages rather than the differences. Try and try and nail down that what is the core competencies and capability that each of the generation really has, and how is that leverageable for the business? Don't look at look at them as a difference at all. I think that's where it starts creating a line. We don't need to draw a line. We need to blend the whole thought process. Second area that I feel is that uh, both parties need to recognize that they are on the same side. (laughs) (laughs) Right? (laughs) It is is not somebody taking, you know, the path of uh, completely tangential to the other. That's not Mm -hmm. the point. So that has to be fundamentally etched into the the discussion. And then obviously, uh, whilst you are on the same side, there can be different approaches, perspective and and the experiences. Hmm. So again, do not get into the deliberation of who is right. Hmm. Rather than that, focus on what is the right thing to do, Hmm. uh, which again, uh, is is a fallacy that, that is noticeable in such situations. One gets into more of an argumentative uh, discussions rather than a, a progressive deliberation. One has to be very conscious when you're sitting across the table on such matters. Another very important thing is that there has to be a mutual respect. The second generation needs to respect what the earlier generation has been able to achieve as a part of the business. The earlier generation has to respect that the new generation is coming with a lot of bustling ideas, a a different approach, a very different perspective, uh, but probably short on experience. But let me respect that. So there has to be very, very strong mutual respect, which then needs to transcend into unconditional trust, which again needs to be established. Very well said, uh, this is. Uh, Another point that I have seen is that people stop communicating. Uh, hmm. The moment they find that Hmm. whatever I am saying is not heard or whatever I say is is not going to be accepted. So I stop communicating, the other side stops communicating and the void keeps growing. Hmm. Very, very deterrent thing 
to be doing in such matters. Again, another aspect is that the people involved, the stakeholders involved need to be very, very conscious of not taking decisions based on hearsays or third party comments. They have to verify it, validate it from the horse's mouth and then sort it out rather than just going and running with a decision. It will happen because each of them will have their own coterie. Mm. And each coterie wants to serve their vested interest. Now, it is up to the stakeholder to recognize and filter what really is useful and valid as a data. Because finally, as I said, both are thinking for the same goal post Mm. to be achieved. The path may differ, but you are still on the same side of the coin. Mm. And if these are really kind of consciously adhered to, my take is that the differences, therefore, can be utilized for positive progression for the business that they ultimately desire. Most of the business owners uh, have leadership uh, skills. Uh, uh, Sometimes... uh... Do these leaders uh, or the business owners identify their leadership skills as inborn skills or sometimes they lack certain skills? Can they be cultivated? Leadership is kind of uh, a virtue that needs to be well nurtured and imbibed within. My belief is that every individual on this planet has a leadership trait. Wow. How then a few become leaders and others do not lies in the fact that how that individual realizes that I can be a leader. How do I nurture it? How do I really acquire learning as a part of what makes me a leader? And importantly, whatever is the knowledge, whatever is the learning, whatever is the observation that I have around me, how do I apply it? A lot of people have the right knowledge, have the right experience, can be a leader, but they are not applying to what they have learned and practice what they can evolve to as the next step. They are awaiting somebody to tell them and give them a tag that now you are a leader. Only then I will expose myself. World is not going to do that for you. Mm. Nobody in the in your workspace or nobody in otherwise is going to come and give you tags into saying that you are a great person. You are a, a leader now. You have now uh, spent 20 years in the industry. So therefore, you automatically become a leader. Sorry. Mm-hmm. doesn't happen that way. Individuals have to start realizing that leaders gain respect, trust, and confidence through their actions, words, and demeanor. It is not a commandment just because I am at a certain position, just because I have probably hundreds or fifties or thousands of people reporting into me. That doesn't make you a leader. That only makes you a manager of certain tasks. Every leader is a continuous learner. I am I'm privy because I have been able to also uh, help out on journey of a few people. And let me give you just a, a few snippets of examples. Mm-hmm. We have had Office Tenno. Today is an entrepreneur. Wow. We have an office boy mm-hmm. who today is running a logistics company. Wow. We have an office boy who graduated through his own capability and thirst of learning to be working under test and repair center of a PC service unit. And he was able to also go through the PCBs and solder the capacitors and do what is required to be done. Amazing. (laughs) So... There is no stoppage and that is which comes back to my firm belief that every individual on this earth has a leadership trait. 
are you recognizing it are you living up to it are you nurturing it the way it should be are you really in the progressive thinking and not in a thinking where you are just waiting for people to say that oh, you know nobody recognizes my talent nobody has time to recognize your talent <laughs> it's that's right right yeah everybody everybody is busy doing what they need to do mm. for their their success so this is again where where people like us and and the practice that we are doing could probably be you know a, a game changer because as i said right the western interest that we as coach will have is to see the success of the person that we engage that's it mm-hmm. when you say that a person has to nurture himself as a leader where do they start okay the first point is they start with the fact that everybody is a leader from there onwards how should the journey be a uh, three words that come to my mind of somebody who uh, one would regard as a leader or one would want to be uh, an aspiring leader is that you have to be full of humility you have to be very humble in the work that you do and your actions and demeanor uh, you have to be very empathetic uh, towards uh, the way situations are circumstances are and you have to be highly adaptable these three uh, become the cornerstone kind of inner realization saying that am i here am i doing this what do, what does leadership mean to me so i would kind of just give a very simple statement is that leadership is nothing but communicating to people their worth and potential so clearly that they are inspired to see it in themselves awesome coming back to empathy as a leader i have an uh, uh, example where uh, a business owner had given lot of a uh, delegation he had actually trusted his star sales person so during that time there was a uh, lot of confidence in this uh, person and thereby uh, he had shared the most of the confidential information also but uh, as a leader when you are building your team uh, what if the team member actually misplaces that uh, trust and uh, quit and they become your uh, competitors we have uh, seen many uh, business owners facing this issue so the question for them at that point of time is how much should we actually be uh, sharing the information how much should we be delegating to them and when to hold back uh, you know when you uh, are very empathetic you do not tend to hold back certain things so where do you draw the line i think every one of us needs to realize whether we are business owners whether we are people managers nobody is going to work for us for life <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so uh, the fact that person has come to you from some other company hmm and that person is going to keep embarking on to the journey where he she sees his or her aspirations to be met so as a business owner i wouldn't be too bothered about this and i wouldn't let this really bother me at all i would see that am i creating the right mindset workforce who has that level of inner passion and commitment to deliver the results that i want and for that what is it that i need to do to enable them to empower them that's all what i need to focus on so from an organization perspective and given the the situation that you mentioned here my view thought or my view is that as a company if you have certain set of guiding principles what is the objective of setting guiding principle it is to lead sustainable and scalable change within your organization and ensure that everybody recognizes that there is leadership at all levels so uh, a few uh, references or examples of what those guiding principles can be which need to be imbibed by every individual in the organization including the owner of the organization mm. a lot of times i have seen is that there is a line drawn between uh, applicable to us and applicable to them yeah that line needs to go away mm-hmm. if you are passionate about your business it is 
my responsibility to make sure that I'm able to create at least 10% or 15% or 20% of my workforce seeing with the same passion that I have. Hmm. If I have been able to bridge that gap, the situation that you mentioned or whatever it is will not be hurting or will not be kind of, you know, being looked upon as the fact that, oh, now that, you know, I have spent $50,000 on this person and now he's coming and putting a resignation. Expected. Mm -hmm. Expected. The challenge that you have to put yourself in is that now that I have invested in this person, how well am I able to leverage it? What is it that I'm going to look from this person, which is going to be really getting to my next milestone of the company that I want? Am I sitting and talking down with these people whom I have empowered and enabled as to what my expectations are, what I want them to do, how I want them to uh, really be more contributory workforce? I think those steps are probably missed out. Hmm. It is like the company feels that they are obliging the employees by sending them for some learning. And therefore, the employees are need to be obligated. Now, those are not the right thought process. So let me get back to what I was mentioning as some of the reference points uh, of guiding principles. Continuous improvement, mm -hmm. integrity, empowerment, teamwork, openness, courage, innovation, self-drive, commitment, timeliness. These become guiding principles. How are these communicated as a part of your organization's DNA? How you want every employee to imbibe and work through, how well are they going to decipher the same to the new people joining in and how they all recognize with the fact that this is where we are in charge to be the leader of our own work. A leader does not have to be, again, somebody who needs to have people under him or her. A leader can be an individual worker doing his or her own work, which is going to contribute to the cause of the organization. Does that answer? Yes, very much. Yeah. Awesome. We have also seen uh, a certain case. Uh, this particular case I want to talk about. Hmm. Uh, well, when people... Uh, uh, get this uh, kind of coaching for their team members or sometimes for the business owners uh, themselves mm -hmm. after laying out all these guiding principles and following them also they find that they are unable to scale the business from uh, one level to the next level mm -hmm. uh, so then at such times they feel that they are doing everything right because mm -hmm. they have had certain amount of uh, coaching external coaching and consultants also coming in and going in but uh, they are clueless uh, now. We did yeah. all the things right. So we have yeah. reached one certain stage where they are, right. let's say, for example, $10 million they are earning. And now right. they want to move on to $15 million is the next goal. But they are not able to scale up. So right. where do you think they are going wrong? Let me just uh, put a disclaimer here that uh, this is a, a kind of a generic uh, point mm -hmm. because... A lot of this depends upon the type of business, the ecosystem, the finances, the number of employees, the competition, the marketplace and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. My response will be at a level where I, I do hope that uh, those who are impacted or those who have this kind of a thought process, there will be something in it for them. First and foremost is that uh, assess and compare, you know, five to 10 situation uh, that you had uh, and the prevailing mindsets then internally and the market externally to your current plan. And what are the uh, changes that are very, very noticeable? What kind of differences are showing up? What kind of the mindsets that were prevailing then to what are prevailing now? What is the employee motivation level 
which was then to what it is now. Uh, there needs to be a, a comparative chart that needs to be drawn on these parameters and probably some more as such. Whilst you have identified that what is changed, uh, it is also imperative to identify uh, how much of that change has impacted your plan or your to-be plan. Why do you see moving from 10 to 15 uh, as your benchmark? Can you instead try and identify with a few more other critical ones? Like, for example, at from 5 to 10, and at 10, we are having this much as our profitability. Mm -hmm. When I move from 10 to 13, I want to have X, 2X or 3X profitability. Mm. Or at 10, I was addressing these markets. At 15, I want to go and spread into these markets or I want to tap into these markets or, or whatever it is. Am I looking at moving from 10 to 15 with the same workforce that I had as I moved from 5 to 10? Are my people going to be overstretched and therefore not willing to buy my vision of the fact that we can do it? What kind of improvisation in automation processes, technologies, and empowerment and enablement of people that I need to do, which is going to together help me move from this point A to point B? Can I identify a few baby milestones uh, with associated timeline and not bother about my ultimate whatever is the aspiration? Let me enjoy the journey that I want to really do, uh, which we had as a, as a part of 5 to 10. What next after 15? If that is achieved in six months, what next? And mm -hmm. then why? It's, it's important uh, to really explore on, on these areas to together uh, where you want to stage your journey. Uh, does that make sense? Yes, a lot of sense. A couple of things that uh, you know I may want to, though it may not be directly serving your, your question, but uh, you know in an organization, every business owner aspires that I need to have a high performance organization. I want to have a high performance culture and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have actually put down as a LinkedIn post as well, but for the sake of our discussion, I may want to just uh, uh, you know throw some uh, of my uh, thought aloud on that. Mm. Uh, fundamentally, the uh, you know how are we measuring the sense of ownership and accountability in every act that our team member and our employees and individuals in the organization do? Mm. What is the what is the extent and level of collaborative thinking and teaming? Uh, to succeed, to create win strategies that is existing. Are we really drawing the best of leverages internally and externally? How much are people focused on their self-development, self-improvisation on, on a periodic basis? Are there attention to details while there is a focus on uh, the larger goal? Are we making sure that there is a continuous communication rather than people working in silos and, and thereby uh, being alienated, uh, which may lead to uh, lack of contribution. Last but not the least, everybody in the organization should realize and recognize that uh, being a performer is not an option. It is the minimalistic expectation that any mm -hmm. uh, organization or any person has. And, and the same goes with the leader. Mm. A business person also needs to show his or her contribution to his, his fellow uh, colleagues. Mm -hmm. Just because you are the founder and the owner of the business, that does not get you away from being non-accountable and non-ownership just because you own the company. No, you show them, you, you tell them, mm. you, you be open and candid into saying that, you know what, these are two things that I will take it upon myself and let me also be as much measurable as you guys are on, on these few parameters and then let us see how we can get together have these kind of discussions probably i think it's again you know not a sure shot thing that you will definitely go from 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 or 20 to 30 but you will definitely be progressing again a lot of companies have to also realize that uh, every time a certain business will hit a plateau mm. there is an interesting uh, book 
uh, in fact it's a two book series uh, the first one that came in was crossing the chasm so a lot of companies and it, it's it's a it is a beautiful book which outlines uh, so many companies that seem to have not been able to really go up the way they should have gone and they have kind of not been able to cross the chasm mm-hmm. so they have been and then there is a sequel to that which is called inside the tornado the sequel is all about the companies that have fallen into the chasm how are they going to rise up with the tornado and move on wow they are pretty old books but they are so relevant in their messaging and and in the context of whatever we are even uh, discussing right now great so here i would like to understand that if uh, it is the duty of every person who joins a company that they have to perform if and that is the basic expectation then is that expectation not set right in the beginning what happens why do why do you think that uh, people have to undergo all this high performance programs or increasing productivity levels or keeping them engaged somewhere down the line they get disengaged and this starts affecting so the basic expectation of the business owner is that uh, they have been hired for this purpose and if they are not contributing uh, to the organization then why should they be there in the first place and sometimes they even pay fat salaries uh, which will be a pinch on their pockets and this creates lot of discontentment so where exactly uh, are they going wrong uh, in this kind of scenario if i was the business owner i should realize that whoever is the person who is a part of the organization or who was who is joining my organization has certain aspiration and is looking for some challenges which they want to overcome so that they can establish their growth path am i giving them that mm-hmm. am i being open and candid in the way the organization expects the contribution to be and how they are going to measure and what impact those contributions are going to have to the future of the company setting the kpis and goals and everything else today is more mechanically done and more conventionally done rather than applying the relevance of it to the larger contribution let's take a very simple example mm-hmm. if i were to ask any employee of a business entity as to what work they do they will be able to answer mm. but if i if my next question is that how does your work contribute to the cause of the company you will find so many distinctive and disparate and and so many tangential responses which may have no cognizance to what the owner really is expecting why mm-hmm. which means that the vision of where the company needs to go why it needs to go there why are we into this business and what do we expect each individual to contribute as a part of their overall goal if those things are clearly set out discussed explained and accepted you will not find this kind of challenges you may find different kind of challenges people you may have 10 people clamoring for saying that we are the top most contributor now tell us where do we go from here good problem to have <laughs> mm-hmm. good problem to have great so now uh, uh, you have been coaching lot of uh, women entrepreneurs as well so what has been uh, your experience do you think that uh, women entrepreneurs need more in encouragement or they need more confidence than men to build a successful business <laughs> so first and foremost uh, and this i have been saying to every a women entrepreneur whom i have had the opportunity and privilege to mentor is that first i salute them mm-hmm. um, and 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 respect them from the bottom of my heart because the kind of thought of them becoming an entrepreneur and managing the multifaceted activities and responsibilities is a challenge that a man may find it difficult to understand so i don't think 
uh, that any women entrepreneur needs encouragement i think they have abundance of that what they need is support understanding uh, from their family their near dear ones with a lot of empathy into the work that they do i don't think women entrepreneurs are short of self motivation initiation and self drive they are there and and they may probably uh, be able to influence uh, a lot of others around them that's my take women entrepreneurs per se and and again this is based on my uh, limited experience of having mentored around 80 plus uh, women entrepreneurs across different strata is that they are very strong on intuition and also high on emotions both can be extremely advantageous but at the same time can be vulnerable as well there needs to be a certain amount of balance and consciousness uh, in how you leverage uh, these two very very a uh, finer aspect of uh, personal trait this is no longer a man's world uh, and we all know that breaking the ceiling and all those things that people still talk about i think we are well past that and and we should just uh, recognize and and respect and realize the way uh, women entrepreneurs can shape the the businesses uh, i just i mean all of every women entrepreneur for their indomitable spirit and phenomenal resilience resilience uh their intense uh, persistence to follow one dream and all this uh, while doubling up as a mother wife daughter sister and what not so have to go and salute them amazing w- one last question that's coming to my mind now is uh, do you think every entrepreneur should uh, plan their uh, exit uh, from the business succession plan is a healthy thing for the business whether it is uh, you know uh, a workplace or whether it is a business by itself but succession planning has to be there it's just like probably you know as at individual level we prepare our personal will hmm why do we do that for the family to protect them to protect them to make sure that they are well taken care of when you are not there and that no harm comes to them in whatever way and with whatever you have been able to achieve in life how can they share for themselves and and what not why is then a business different any person who has so passionately built a business who is so consummated with uh, the fact that this has to survive as much as possible then why are you stopping short from not creating a succession plan this makes a lot of sense a lot of sense so with this uh, we almost uh, come to the end of our uh, conversation if you feel that you have a message which you want to give it to the audience please go ahead and share it yeah so uh, one thing i want to uh, just highlight here any person who is seeking to be coached needs to first understand the difference between what is being coached and being consulted hmm. if you have a mindset and an expectation that if i go and undertake coaching i will find answers to my problem or that i will get prescribed solutions to my problems it will fail coaching is not about providing you a prescription hmm. it is not a patient visiting a doctor so that needs to be very very fundamentally understood and clear in the mind are you ready to be coached i think comes from the fact that it is important for the person to self assess what are your current issues and problems what are you expecting sometimes just appropriate reading recognizing real issues can help you find a problem you don't need any third party to tell you you know the answers you may be in predicament you may be in dilemma and with some kind of communication with some kind of reading and blending of some thought process and all you'll be able to achieve it so examples which can be coachable issues is that why are my efforts not yielding desired success how do i move from point a to point b in my business am i clear in my aspirations and what not those could be coachable when a person is uh, coachable 
how will uh, consultancy actually help their business so consultancy is um, a different line of action which basically relates to a certain transactional level inputs and insights including sharing or creating of best practices it is somewhere where a consultant would have to tell the recipient of what they need to do a coach will never do that coaching is all about empowerment it is about making the person realize what they need to do and they will create their own actions of how they are going to achieve it so coaching facilitates thinking mm. coaching is not imposing actions and things to do yeah this is uh, an amazing insight because usually uh, people go with the flow of coaching and consulting uh, they think that both are the same but uh, everybody talks of coaching mentoring and consulting as one word <laughs> but you have very finely drawn the distinct uh, differences between them uh, so now it makes lot of sense because uh, we see uh, business owners saying that i went and met this coach and still nothing is working because it was just their thinking was uh, empowered but not their actions <laughs> and and with what expectations have you gone for coaching hmm i am facing one one burning issue mm-hmm. and somebody has come and told me you know go to this coach he's great he will he will really help you find solutions <laughs> to all your problem so i go to that coach and my mind is only focused on this burning issue the coach is taking me tangentially <laughs> i will take some inputs then i'll come and i experiment here and i'll say what oh, yaar i spent my money and, and this is useless coach whoever gave this they don't even know mm-hmm. uh, this is the usual uh, uh, line which most of the business owners tell that i yeah not and they are not to be blamed they are not to be blamed i think if, if the initial even before they take any coaching uh, sessions Hmm. there has to be an understanding established between the coach and the coachy in what really they want to achieve and is that really what they want to do if that is not what they want to do the session does not start <laughs> it's as simple as that so if people want to connect with you how do they reach out to you i'm reachable on my phone uh, my number is Nine eight four five three four double seven eight two, which is also my WhatsApp, and my email ID is uh, first name dot last name at gmail dot com. So that's Satyen S A T Y E N dot P A R I K H at gmail dot com. Awesome! Uh, so it was wonderful uh, chatting with you, gaining lot of insights uh, from real time scenarios. because this helps uh, be all this information which you have shared is uh, very very experiential and uh, each word is worth its weight couple of thoughts hmm. uh, as we conclude one of the belief and one of the thing that uh, is uh, uh, is something that i also use in my leadership workshop and tell everyone is that do not stay with problem statement hmm and let me give you an example i am not able to take my company beyond 10 million however i am going however i am giving it a try problem statement mm. how do i get my company from 10 million to 12 million in the next 6 months probably thoughts will start coming in so it is my earnest submission and desire that through this conversation that we had and with wonderful questions savita that you have been able to uh, pose it would be great to know if something has touched the right chords something that has provided the listener with an insight that is going to help them something that has been a value add to them which can really get them from where they are i just do hope that we are able to achieve it yes definitely i'll come back with the questions <laughs> <laughs> you have more <laughs> <laughs> go
problem. No problem at all. It's okay. Thank you. Again, I thank you so much for this wonderful uh, talk and conversation, which uh, insights which you gave. I'm sure it will make a difference to everyone who is listening to this. My pleasure as well. Uh... I thank Satyan Parik sir from the bottom of my heart for taking out time to share his wonderful insights of business wisdom. Here are my top six takeaways. My first takeaway is that every leader is a continuous learner. Second takeaway, leadership is a virtue that has to be nurtured. Apply and practice what you have learned. Third takeaway, leaders gain trust, respect and confidence through their actions words and behavior my fourth takeaway leaders have to be humble empathetic and adaptable my fifth takeaway be the leader of your own work and contribute to the organization my sixth takeaway being a performer is not an option it is the minimalistic expectation of an organization and this applies to founders or to the business owners as well thank you so much sir never lose out on an opportunity to learn about cultivating your inner strengths on dream 100 show we strongly believe that life is just a play we win some we lose some we miss some and we mess with some so enjoy your journey and play to the fullest thank you so much for listening to this episode of dream 100 show and now make a smart decision of taking the next step towards building your trust and your dreams don't forget to subscribe to dream 100 show and leave a review on apple podcast share your biggest takeaways with us and follow us on linkedin facebook and instagram for more details shoot an email to us this is savita signing off and catch you soon in our next episode Ooh.